Hello, and welcome to the Sam Fox School at Washington University's Digital Fabrication Instructional Series. In this video, we will be discussing safety protocol and operating procedures associated with our laser cutter lab located in Weill Hall. At this point, you should have a laser cut file ready to be processed. Monitors may be able to help with some last minute issues, but the file handling should be done before you make an appointment. Upon entering the lab, please sign in at the front desk with the lab monitor. Failure to sign this sheet may result in being charged for a missed appointment. This log is cross-checked with appointment calendars to monitor missed appointments. On the desk in front, you will see a list of certain approved and unapproved materials. If you have a question about whether or not you can cut a material, please check with the monitor. Unapproved materials are disallowed for your safety. Some materials may catch fire or emit highly toxic fumes. This is the Universal Laser P6150D. Our lab currently contains three. Upon approaching the machine, you may need to turn it on. The switch is located on the right side toward the back of the machine. Press it all the way towards you. Now would be a good time to measure your materials. The lab is equipped with both analog and digital calipers to measure your stock width. Our digital calipers measure in inches and millimeters, but for our purposes, you should be measuring in inches using the decimal function. This is an important measurement for using our material settings library. Once you have this number, write it down. Gently open the lid of the machine and place your material inside. Slide it to the top left corner of the bed where the numbers read zero on the rulers. Your stock material should be completely flat, but if it is slightly bent, you can use a small amount of tape in the corner to keep it down. Material that is highly bowed or disfigured will not cut appropriately. Be sure there is no raised material that will obstruct the movement of the laser head. Now, at the computer, download your file from Whistlebox. Files are no longer accepted via flash drive for computer security purposes. It is recommended that all projects be saved in multiple file formats before uploading to Box to ensure maximum compatibility. Now let's cut from Rhino. Open Rhino and create a new document in inches, or convert your current document's units to inches. Next, draw a rectangle that is 32 inches by 18 inches, and move it to the white layer. You can create new art or drag and drop your art. We will need to change the cut layer to be RGB red. Click on the layer color and make this adjustment. Next, open the properties tab and check that your cut layer object's print color is set to by layer. This means our printer, in our case the laser, will read the cut layer as red. Next, go to File, Print, or type the command Print to open up the Print dialog window. From the Printer drop-down window, select the PLS 6150D and press Properties. This will open up UCP, the Universal Laser Cutter Printer Client. Select your material from the Materials database and enter its thickness. Under the Air Assist box, be sure to drag the sliders all the way to 100%. Click Apply and OK to close out this window. In Rhino's Print Dialog window, open the View and Output Collapsible tab. Be sure that you have Top selected from the drop-down menu, then click Window. 
you should be prompted to establish a print window. Select your 32 by 18 rectangle. It will ask you if you want to change the scale to fit. Select yes and hit enter. You can now press print. Minimize Rhino and open UCP from the taskbar or desktop. You can go to the settings tab and double check that your preferences are correct. Once you confirm your preferences, press the big green button to begin cutting. Before beginning your job, open the damper and turn on the exhaust for the corresponding laser. Be sure to close the lid and press the big green play button in the UCP printer window. Your job should begin cutting. While your job is cutting, you should remain next to the laser. Do not ever leave the laser unattended. There will occasionally be a flame where the laser is cutting, but this is normal. Flames are only of concern when the fire is still present once the laser has moved on from that position. In the unlikely event of a fire, please notify staff immediately. Once your job has been completed, wait until the head of the laser repositions itself into its home location in the upper right corner of the machine. Then, you may open the door and remove your piece. It may be worthwhile to check that the laser has cut all the way through. Do this by holding down the piece with one hand and gently pulling up on a corner to see if the pieces fall through. If they have not been cut all the way through, release the corner without moving the piece, close the lid, and consider running the job again, or consult with a monitor on duty. Remove all scraps from the laser bed by hand. We have a small vacuum for picking up pieces that cannot be easily picked up. This vacuum clogs easily and should not be used to pick up large scraps. Dispose of your scraps appropriately. If at any point you don't feel comfortable performing these tasks on the laser, we have staff to help you. This concludes the laser cutting tutorial.